Now entering Nerdist.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Chris Hardwick! Oh my gosh, thank you so much, you guys. Oh, no. Oh, they're stomping. They're stomping. The, the roof is being metaphorically raised, as so many hip-hop songs have hypothesized. Uh, this is awesome. I'm so glad you're here. This is a very special Nerdist podcast live at Largo. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, it's a very, very special show. This is an all-music show, except for all the talking that I'm going to do at the top and then the talking in between. So it, I think it's probably more uh, appropriate to say this is welcome to the mostly music show of the Nerdist podcast live featuring Mike Furman and Paul and Storm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to say a couple quick things. I've been on the road a lot, doing a lot of comedy in places, trying to make strangers laugh in rooms, which is weird. But uh, you see a lot of weird stuff when you're driving across uh, the country. Like I was, I don't know, like two months ago, I was just driving through Kansas. I don't know why, I must have been mad at myself. And <laughs> off on the side of the road, there was a hay bale right there. And on the hay bale, someone had written, Obama lies! In spray paint. And then on a hay bale next to that one, someone wrote, On your mom! <laughs> yep. Hay bales, redneck chat threads, till they get the internet. That's what they got. That's how they got to express their feelings. First! Yeah, you were first. You were first. Have you guys driven across this country? Do you even know what's out there? Oh, well, thank you for coming. Good night. I wasn't expecting an affirmation. It's a lot of, a lot of corn and cracker barrels. There's a shitload of corn in this country, you guys. It is America's shag carpet. If you were to wake up one night with in some kind of an irrational panic, like, what if we run out of corn? We're fine. Corn's not going anywhere. It's here to stay. As a matter of fact, I think corn should be on the flag. Let's replace the stars, a niblet for every state. Because I firmly believe that if you look closely enough at the Earth from space, it looks a lot like a piece of Crispix cereal. Corn on one side, rice on the other. That's what it is. <laughs> That's not meant to be disparaging to Asians. There is uh, rice that is grown on the other side of the country. I love Asians. I love Asians. They're awesome. They are. With their focused work ethic and straight pubic hair. Getting it. I love it. Well done. There's also a lot of cracker barrels. Cracker barrel! Cracker barrel! You guys been to a cracker barrel? Yeah. Cracker barrel. Hilariously named when you consider the clientele. <laughs> they might as well call it No Blacker Barrel. It's just white people. <laughs> just white people. You know, they're just attracted to it like fly paper. But it's, uh, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting place. If you've been to one Cracker Barrel, you've been to every Cracker Barrel. And I don't mean that in a figurative comedy way. I mean they are all exactly the same, inch for inch. And I think that's because rednecks get confused easily. <laughs> How do I know that's not just an old shed unless there's a hundred rocking chairs out front? One, two, four, a hundred. All right, everybody, get out of the truck. Let's go inside and wade through this weird store full of shit we don't need. Well, looky there, is that a triple XL t-shirt with a teddy bear hugging the flag? Well, all right. <laughs> well, looky there, a NASCAR poster with the Lord's Prayer on it. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I got a mailbox at home, but mine don't have a goose painted on it wearing a bonnet for some reason. <laughs> it's about as environmentally friendly as rednecks get. Hey, geese don't have eyelids. Let's protect their tiny eyes. Environment. Like this one. <laughs> Everything you eat at 
Cracker Barrel is terrible for you. It's rotten for you. It's literally, they give you a plate of every animal, like an entire fucking barn took some sort of Jonestown suicide pact in a deep fryer. You just see the same, like, 12 people in every Cracker Barrel. There's, like, one guy, there's, like, a trucker. He's just getting wider and wider and wider and just shoveling it in. Pretty soon, he just starts to develop that fat guy neck mouth in the back. He's got to start feeding that, too. He's got back tits, and he needs to put a bra on with geese wearing bonnets on it. And then his pants get tighter and tighter and tighter. And when he gets up, there's a crease in the front. I, I call it a mussy right up here. Mantle toe also would have been an acceptable <laughs> term. But you just stumble out of the Cracker Barrel all greasy and confused, but weirdly patriotic. Like, the whole experience feels like a Toby Keith song fucked a bucket of KFC. <laughs> it is a redneck nation we live in, y'all. The national bird should be Hot Wings, for Christ's sake. The national anthem should be The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. Which is a ridiculous song. It's just so obvious. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them. No shit, Kenny Rogers. Thanks for the stellar poker advice. No one told me to pick up the cards. I guess I'll just figure that one out myself. That song is so obvious, if it had been called The Hunter, I think it would have gone like this. You gotta shoot at an animal. Don't shoot rocks or people. <laughs> at least for a country song, though, it's, it's commendable from the standpoint that at least it tries to be a metaphor, you know? Deal the hand you're dealt, or whatever, but... Which is, it, it, like, for, for a country song, that is an achievement, because most country songs are very on the nose. They're usually about five topics. All country songs cover five general areas. It's uh, women and booze and trucks and guns and the Lord. And that's pretty much it. It's those five things. And it's because I don't think... Rednecks don't really appreciate, uh, like, subtext or anything like that. You start throwing, you start trying to hide ideas under other ideas, and they get confused, they get mad, they start punching the air, and then they take it out on minorities. So you got to be really careful. You don't want to confuse them too much. Most country music is just so on the nose. It's so, like, they don't understand double entendre. Rednecks, they understand single entendre. Hey, I sure would like to have sex with your vagina, if you know what I mean. know what you mean. There's a lot of, a lot of strip clubs in the South, too, in the, in the, in the middle of the country, because I don't know, I don't know, it's just, that's a thing that they love to do. I know strip clubs are everywhere, but they're densely packed in the middle of the country, and I find strip clubs repulsive. I don't get them. I'm a, I say it, I'm a straight dude who doesn't understand strip clubs. Hey, guys, you know, they're not interested in you, really. You know that? It's just because you got money. You basically walk in there, and strippers are just pigeons with tits. They go where the bread is. Like, they don't fucking care about your dreams or your hopes or what you want to be. As soon as you're out of money, they fucking flat. That's it. That's it. And you can't touch them. There's no touching. There's no touching. Like, I, I feel like that's the same dynamic as walking into a deli starving and being like, here's $300, can I just stare at the roast beef? Like, you don't win. <laughs> and is a stripper really your sexual ideal? That's really who you want to have sex with? I feel like taking home a stripper and having sex with her is the same thing as dragging home one of those couches you find on the curb <laughs> and then fucking it. <laughs> you don't know what's gonna fall out of those cushions. Or... Lipstick, herpes, a Sacagawea dollar. You don't know what's in there. By the way, I like to talk about vaginas a lot in my act. I can't help it. I went to all-boys Catholic school. That's what happens. You too? You go all-boys Catholic school too? And for those of you who haven't, it's not that different. All-boys Catholic school is a lot like going to a regular school, except your teacher is a priest. With benefits? What? <laughs> So that being said, here's my, here's my interesting vagina tale about strip clubs. I found out re recently, <laughs> oh, 
w was Baby Donald on Disney's Vagina Tales? I can't remember. <laughs> Um, uh, in, in the strip clubs, when a lady grooms everything except for a, a little superfluous square of hair above this awesomeness down here, uh, do you know what it's called? No, not well. The la no, the landing strip is when it's like a, like a rectangular strip, like coming in for a landing the wrong way, pull out. Like you don't land this way. Well, she got a landing strip. I better drag my nuts across her torso and bring it in for a landing. <laughs> and is a gay landing strip just a strip of hair? <laughs> then, uh, the answer is yes. No, I'm talking about when it's just a little square of hair, just a little superfluous square of hair above the awesomeness down here. They call it the Hitler stash. Because it is square like Hitler's mustache. Really, strippers? Was Chaplin Patch taken? Because he was a little more fun than Hitler. Why would you name the most wonderful thing in the universe after the worst person in the history of mankind? And by the way, I don't, I really don't understand, as a gentleman, I do not understand what that little square of hair is designed to do. Does it serve any purpose? Or is that just to warn gentlemen callers, just to remind you you're not about to fuck a baby? Like, why do you? Just get rid of it or have some uniformity. Like, you don't mow part of your lawn and go, I'm gonna leave the part by the door three inches taller. Like, you just fucking. <laughs> by the way, I'm not a Hitler fan by any stretch of the imagination, but do you really feel like this was the legacy that he intended to leave on mankind? <laughs> One day I hope that women will shave their pussies into the shape of my schnurbot! Well, I think, uh, I think I want to go ahead and start the show, if that's all right with you guys. I know that sounded fake sincere, like, I, like it's your choice if I'm going to start the show. If it's all right with you guys, nope, all right, good night, Ron. Um, now, we didn't play the theme song at the beginning of the show because it's very special guest. I don't know, did any of you hear the first Nerdist podcast that we did, the very first one? We did not have a theme song at that time, and so we were at Tom Lennon's house, and um, a, an elderly, eh, central to South American gentleman who happened to be walking by, uh, Senior Abuelito, who's very famous apparently in his country, and um, he offered to, on the spot, write us a theme song, and he is here tonight to perform it for you live hey, as a reprisal. Did you? What? Yeah, is it Chris? It sounded like you said you wanted to touch my pussy with Tang. I don't understand any of those words. Testing, testing the microphone. He's very shy, and um, I want to touch your pussy with Tang. Wow, see, I'm positive that that's what was. I got to touch your pussy with Tang. It's our wait. Wow. Come on. Check it out. Yes. So, uh, so he's going to play Senior Abuelito. He's not out on stage right now because he's incredibly shy. And he's going to play the Nerdist Podcast theme live. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Senior <laughs> Abuelito. <laughs> It's got to have sex on you. Dog and nerd. It's a nerdist podcast. I eat and nerd cat. Dog and nervous. Dog and nervous. It's a nerd cat. Please don't eat in your heart. The nerd cast is going to make you a scarf and some gloves. Email us at podcast at nerdist.com and say, where's my fucking scarf and blow? 
Let's have a hand for Senor Abuelito. And while we're at it, let's welcome Mr. Jonah Ray. And Mr. Matthew Myra. As far away from you yeah, as this is weird. Yeah. This reminds me of Thanksgiving. Shut up, Hardwick. <laughs> I love you anyway. Uh, how are you guys? Can, can you, you're hearing me on the side of this mic, talking to the side of this yes. mic. Okay. Yeah, I can. Ken, well, I can hear you because you're next to me. Can you hear him? Yeah. Thank you. Doppler, Doppler, Doppler. <laughs> So, uh, how have you, well, what's been going on? I haven't actually seen you guys since we record. Well, Joe and I just saw the Web Soup taping. We quickly taped Web Soup and then raced over here to do the. I didn't race, I took my time. Oh. Yeah, went for a drive, looked at the tar pit. <laughs> <laughs> it really is just one pit, right? It's not even a pit, it's just a, it's a man made lake with bubbles coming out of it. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, I've got to tell you though. It smells like shit. It does smell like shit. And that saber toothed tiger statue has been about to drown for. Hundreds of thousands of years. I, I feel sorry for the babe, uh, the baby uh, elephant having to watch the mom or dad just die forever. Yeah, That's, <laughs> it's it's like a Groundhog Day of death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's actually probably like a parent with alcoholism, just slowly dying. I think I got too real there. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> Rorschach test. <laughs> Wait, dad drowned himself in liquid. <laughs> Booze. Don't do it. So uh, Matthew, how's uh, how, how's work? <laughs> Booze, don't do it. Yeah. Excellent copy. Thank you. <laughs> um, the bad after school special. Bad after school special. Matt, uh, Matthew, what's your record up to now with uh, changing out a hard drive? Uh, probably, probably, it depends on what kind of computer. Um, really. Let's say it's. I think uh, that's enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Let's say it's a uh, uh, Mac Pro 17 inch. 17-inch MacBook Pro? Yeah. The new unibody? The new unibody, aluminum unibody MacBook Pro. That, that'll take maybe a minute and a half. Oh. Wow. You said it like it should sound cool. Right? <laughs> uh, it's probably I spend most are... of my nights at home alone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I pretty much know every line from Mystery Science Theater. That's, uh... <laughs> I'm uh, pretty rad. Well, they, he's only home alone because his entire family got on a plane to France and they forgot him. <laughs> this uh, time it was Florida. It was Florida. And I was stuck in New York. <laughs> yeah. Did they go to France the first movie? Yeah, they, they went. They went to Paris. I guess I, I don't he know. He was I... with the French called Les Incompetents. Remember that? I do. Les Incompetents. Yeah. <laughs> he sure let those uh, bandits have it, though. <laughs> the Wet Bandits? No. no, the White Bandits was the first movie. The, the Sticky Bandits was the second movie. They changed yep. their name. Yeah. And you then the third movie. I was actually I was in a uh, I was in a punk band growing up called the Year Outs, and uh, the first song we ever made was called Home Alone, and it was about the movie Home Alone. <laughs> it was uh, Christmas morning. What do I see? No one's home except for me. Um, uh, I grab my gun. I must protect my house. Lots of screaming and yelling. <laughs> uh, and then it just kind of goes on from it there. It goes there. Fast beats. Uh, you know, punk rock. The old punk rock. Did you, uh, did you talk about uh, taking out the tarantula, maybe going to the store and buying a toothbrush and making friends with an old man you thought was a murderer who lived across the street in a church? <laughs> no, that, that, I saved that stuff for my poetry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be weird if the only art you would create was just all Home Alone art. You were just kind of a weird, one of, you know, one of those Home Alone yeah. savants that everyone's always talking about. Yeah, I have a, I have a really good collage uh, of Daniel Stern. Just, uh, <laughs> And then, uh, actually, and one of my favorite uh, GIFs or GIFs or whatever. Uh, what? GIF? G I F? GIFs. Oh, okay, sure. GIFs uh, is the one. It's just, uh, it's just um, Joe Pesci with the uh, flame hitting his head. Has anyone seen that GIF? Where it's just, I watch it for fucking hours. Or it's just him peeking his head through a door, like going, ah, as the uh, flame hits his beanie. I fucking, once I, I was watching it, and then I was like, it was like, huh. And then 15 minutes had gone by. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you got caught in a weird Joe Pesci time loop? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my nose started bleeding. Oh my god. I... Joe Pesci's your constant! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> then I had to watch the super to get out of my system. Get it out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> the Super. <laughs> that was the only other Joe Pesci movie I could think of. Really? Really? <laughs> my, my girlfriend and I try to come up with movies that are that are so in the peripheral of our consciousness that when you reference it, 
it's just automatically funny. When I you forgot go. for eight years that Fern Gully was a movie. Yeah, yeah. Fern Gully was a movie. <laughs> Fern Gully, the, the last rainforest. Yeah. Only people remembered it because of Avatar. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> same I remembered thing. it for Robin Williams' strong vocal performance as the bat. Was he the bat? The fruit bat. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Anyway. Well, here's what an example of the thing. Also, uh, uh, what's the DuckTales movie? The, the Magic Lamp? Aladdin? Uh, uh, <laughs> That's all I need. I think it was, That's all I need to feel validated by DuckTales that. DuckTales and the Magic Lamp? I, did, nah. I had a VHS of Duck to the Future. What the <laughs> fuck is that? It was a DuckTales TV show where there was time travel. It should have just it's been really like DuckTales doing Back to the Future. That would have been I way better. It should have been DuckTales directed by J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> No, but imagine if it was DuckTales doing Back to the Future, you gotta go quack in time. <laughs> ah! Get poke poke. <laughs> gotta get quack in time. <laughs> quack, 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 quack in time. <laughs> I need a new duck. Tell me, second. doctor, <laughs> where are we going? I'm gonna do the whole fucking song, I don't care. <laughs> Whenever I launch into that, my girlfriend always goes, Chris Hardwick, master of parody. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever, whenever she references an old, a movie, the one that we always go to is, wow, I haven't seen a movie since Road to Wellville. <laughs> oh, Road to Wellville. Dana Carvey, yeah. Anthony Hopkins. Well, I haven't seen a movie since The Glimmer Man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, I haven't seen a movie since Tom Arnold's The Stupids. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen a movie since Meet the Apple Gates. Oh, are you, wait, are you thinking about the, what's the Apple Gates? Wasn't that, did I get it wrong? Are you thinking about the one where Ed Were Baker Jr. Were cockroaches? Yeah, the cockroaches, that's not the Apple Gates, what is that? No, it is the Apple Gates. Yeah, fuck you, it's the Apple Gates. <laughs> How dare you challenge me? I told you not to embarrass me in front of the, fuck. <laughs> this Thanksgiving is over. <laughs> I just mind uh, <laughs> turning over the table. That's how they did radio in the old days, right? There was no foley. They just they just said stuff. And yeah. now Jack Benny is walking across a room. Yeah. Walk, 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 walk. Well, what do you know? There's a poor racial stereotype who's there to greet him at the car. I don't want to do that sound. All right. Well, well then you're bad at improv because that's I called don't denial. Do that just that get sound. Senior Arbolito. He can do the. That's, oh, like, yes. that's, that, that's the kind of that's like steeplechase improv where you try to fuck the other people over and make them be racist and stuff. Look, it's that racist that only says the N-word. <laughs> yep, that's the only word he knows. Yeah. I've never seen a time where he didn't say that word. <laughs> Come on, Doug. <laughs> yes, and this shit. It's just improv. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, improv groups in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, <laughs> next to the Crack Bear. Well, um, I went to the Crack Bear for the first time recently. You did? Yeah, I was uh, doing a field shoot uh, in. Uh, well, that's a technical term on television where we go out and shoot outside the studio. Back to your story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I caught a plane. I don't know what that is. I <laughs> uh, no, I was in, I was in a, a, a central Pennsylvania. John, no, not Johnstown. Uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, you were in Harrisburg. Yeah. No. Grown. A little bit of a Three Mile Island in you. <laughs> the whole time I was drinking water there, and then I realized, wait, there was a nuclear meltdown. Maybe I shouldn't be drinking the tap water. Actually, there's never been a nuclear anything. That's not a word. Did I say nuclear? <laughs> Love it, or, down. love it or leave it, Chris, it's nuclear here. <laughs> <laughs> nuclear, love it or leave it. Yeah. It's good enough for George W., it's good enough for me. Oh, G-dubs? Yeah. G-dubs. Yeah. <laughs> G-dubs tearing it up but, uh, in the nuclear sun. <laughs> Cracker Barrel, though, amazing. It's an amazing the place. Food is de- the food is delicious. Have you yeah. seen the Japanese poster for W, the movie? No. It's just, it's essentially the American poster, but with a shoe flying at his head dots <laughs> drawn towards it and that's so, the Japanese poster for W yeah. they just in case they thought the shoe they was just floating the by him they put they dots they had the dots oh when that guy threw the shoe oh, yeah. at him yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's what they think in Japan that's genius <laughs> they just see him as the shoe president <laughs> <laughs> and not shoe in the Chinese sense <laughs> That got what the, that got what it deserved. <laughs> A whole lot of nothing. H S I U spells shoe. Um, 
I think we should start the. Uh, I want to start the show because there's a lot of awesome musical show uh, about to come out. You don't like us, dude? Yeah. No, I just. <laughs> wow. Fair enough. Understood. Defensive body posture. <laughs> I don't want to hear them chitter chat. I don't want to <laughs> hear the musical ears. Can we get this guy out of here? Oh, we don't have security? <laughs> no. Nope. No one cares? All right. Okay. Nope. Sorry. Just like being at the Streamies, where two bloggers can jump on stage and rape you in front of thousands. I heard about that. What was the deal? I heard that the whole thing was chaos. It was a, it was a little on the chaotic side, the Streamy Awards. I, I, don't think it, I don't think it did anything to convince people that internet content is, you know, cutting edge and of quality just because of... What do you call this, motherfucker? Well, right? <laughs> It was just kind of a. It was just kind of a. It was just kind of a bummer. It was kind of a bummer. But yeah, these two guys getting raped. I'd imagine. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Well, here was the worst part of it. Here was the worst part of it is that we were on stage. And these two guys jumped on stage. And I didn't know who they were, and so much stuff had been going wrong that I didn't act surprised because I was like, "Well, this is par for the course." <laughs> and so, I fe- you hear me say in the video clip, it's on YouTube somewhere. Oh, great! Someone's poking me in the asshole with their finger. When I watched the video, the guy's pants were down. It twerked his finger. <laughs> what? Yes. Nary a finger in your Nary pants? Nary a digit. <laughs> well, Chris, that could only mean one thing. He was semi-aroused. Oh, God. <laughs> That's right. Hardwick still got it. <laughs> there you go. Because you were mugging to the table, you didn't see my sweet high five representation. <laughs> no, no, I was just uh, drenched in a shame shower that I got raped in front of a bunch of people. Anyway, um, give him, a, give that guy a couple more seconds. He would have given you a shame shower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. These nice. jokes brought to you by Smithwicks. Drink up. <laughs> Smithwicks. <laughs> uh, what's a name that sounds kind of regal in a dumb English way? Smithwicks. Smithwicks. <laughs> How about Smith's? Nah, it's not British enough. Smith Wicks? I love it. The Hardwicks and the Smith Wicks never got along. Oh, what a feud. Uh, well, I want to bring out, uh, I want to bring out my best friend in the entire world. A guy that I, is my brother. We've been friends since great, it's not you guys. Oh. Oh, hey, you're already out here, so you don't understand how time works. Uh, <laughs> it's not linear, Chris. I it's thought you were going to introduce It is linear. It joke. is not linear. <laughs> we are not in a parallel universe. That's what you think. Well, maybe yes. the parallel me thinks so. <laughs> but not this one. Um, third season, this will make all sense. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, then third uh, is the then gonna there's going to be six episodes where the Nerdist Podcast spins in a cage, and then uh, we'll, <laughs> there'll be a writer's strike, and then we'll wrap up that season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to bring to the stage my best friend. We met in college at UCLA, and we've been best friends ever since. Uh, I love him to death, and he has a solo album that is coming out very, very soon, and he's going to perform some uh, solo songs for you. The Firm of Hard and Firm, Mr. Mike Furman is here! <laughs> Very nice of you. My God. Thank you. I was fine just leaving it on the floor. But no, no, no. I'm an across-the-board host. I appreciate that. That's very nice. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. I'm very uh, thank glad you to be for here. Being. I feel very awkward. I feel like this is not how I'm supposed to be talking into a microphone. <laughs> Mike Furman is now turned around in a way that his spine was not meant to curve. <laughs> he may be stuck like this forever. Oh, <laughs> this is an advanced move. Um... <laughs> But, uh, all right, so I'm going to do a few songs real quick. And um, this, uh, this song is off of, as Chris mentioned, a, a new album that will be coming out hopefully in a, a week, maybe two. But we'll find out. Um, what is the album called? The album is called The Very Last Songs I Will Ever Record, <laughs> Part One. <laughs> All right, so this song is, uh, since you guys made this reference, I want to go along with it. This song is an oldie, but, uh, <laughs> well, to the people listening to this podcast in the future, it's an oldie where you come from. <laughs> um, I want to say real quick, by the way, 
Um, the guys who are going to be coming out here tonight and doing comedy music. Uh, comedy music is uh, kind of, it can be kind of tough. And, uh, you know, some people, most people think that, like, I'll walk through a, a, an airport and I'll have my guitar and people will be like, oh, what kind of music do you play? I'm like, oh, it's comedy. And they're like, oh, that's too bad. That's cool. All right. And I'm like, you know what, dude? All right. Because most people think you just put the word chicken, monkey, or duck in a song and boom, you have a comedy song. <laughs> so... Uh, we are here tonight to try to prove that it is a little bit more than just that. So, here we go. Song, comedy song, number one. I love Largo. I had a job working as a bank teller. Every day from 9 a.m. to 5. I wore a tie, a jacket, and a smile. Always last to leave and first to arrive. Put the bank. It started losing money. There was panic and whispering in the halls. Then they said that I'm to blame, for I played this little game as I counted out my customers' withdrawals. Let's see, that's one for them and one for me, and one for them and one for me, one for them and another one for me. One goes out and one stays in, and one's a loss and one's a win, and more for them, that just means more for me. One for them and one for me, and one for them and one for me. A good one for them, but a better one for me. One for them and one for me, and one for them and one for me, and one for them and one more for all number one, see? They fired me for that. <laughs> well, I'll never step foot in that place again. And you can take that to the bank. <laughs> Moving on. I spent a summer working as an orderly at a mental institution by the lake. The patients were impatient and disorderly. Their brains had taken more than they could take. I treated them with kindness and compassion. I took them out for walks among the hills. Oh, the job was going great, till one day the nurse was late, and they asked me, could you pass out the pills? And I said, one for them and one for me, and one for them and one for me, one for them, no, don't mind if I do. One for them and one for me, a red for them, a red for me, a blue for them, a blue for you know who. One for them and one for me, one goes out and one stays near, and one for there, and one for here, and one for you, and you, so two for me. Three for them, and three for me, and four for them, and four for me, and five for them, and five for me, and six for them, and six for me, and seven for them, and seven for me, and eight for them, and eight for me, and nine. <laughs> nine pills. <laughs> Look at my hands. <laughs> They're going crazy! <laughs> where was I? Seriously, I don't know where I was. Wherever I was, I'm sure I'm not allowed back. Moving on! All the food in my home has been eaten. There's broken toys and diapers everywhere. The halls are full of muddy little footprints. And a full second of silence is rare. Little hands, they root through my belongings. My home's the site of a full invasion, see? The place is crawling with babies because a friend suggested maybe you can work at that adoption agency. And it's been one for them, one for me, and one for them, and one for me. One for them that I end up liking and I keep it. One for them and one for me, a he for them, a he for me, a she for them, another she for me. One for them and one for me, an inch for them, an inch for me. I get 2,000 pounds, I keep a ton. One for them and one for me, and one for them and one for me, then two for them, because remember I owe them one. Life is all about balance, kids. No, don't balance on that. No, put that down. Put it down. Great job, Mike. Excellent. Very first time I have ever played piano and sang in front of a crowd. Are you serious? Yeah. I have... And you didn't yeah. mess up. I... You didn't mess up twice. Yeah, that's right. It was, thank God. Can you imagine? Oh my God, in front of half a million people, <laughs> that been something. <laughs> that's one of those ones where I wrote that song for the album, and then as soon as I was done with it, I was like, rad, cool. And then I realized I have to fucking play that live. Like, how the hell am I gonna play that? But. But you just did. I know, it works out. Well, I'm telling you, you covered it well. I honestly, I will edit that song together to, and make it, like, if you want. Unless you want it to feel sure. organic and be no, like, no, oh, no, we're no, all... make me sound like a professional. Sure you don't want to see the man behind the curtain? Yeah, it's all, all right. right. We'll 
attribute that to whoever has a recorder going, and that'll be the uh, the bonus. This will be one of those special moments only for you. <laughs> All right, so comedy song number two. Uh, this, this is a song, I'm gonna openly admit right now that uh, this is kind of a cheat for me because I already, one, it's a cover. I'm telling you right now, I didn't write it. Uh, two, uh, it's easy for me because I already kind of sound like this guy's voice, so it's kind of, you know, kind of cheesy, but that's all right. Um, there is also, I should tell you, a very, very complex chord that I'm a little nervous about, and it goes like this. That is, that you don't just write down as a B minor. That is like an algebra equation. That, one, <laughs> that is saucy. All right, so uh, I'm a little nervous that I get that one right. So here we go. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a, what a, what a, what a wonderful world. <laughs> I see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night, and I think. What a wonder, 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 wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're You gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. Ah, that's such good Call advice. Back. <laughs> By the way, you guys had some of the best movie references since Condor Man. Really great. Wow, I haven't thought about that movie since Life Stinks with Mel Brooks. Wow. Mm. Wow, that totally reminds me of Dunstan Checks In. <laughs> Um, Guys, I'm not going back too far, but that reminds me of Pluto Nash. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That reminds me of Iron Man 2. That doesn't work. That doesn't. <laughs> that just came out. Oh, that did just came out. That did just came out. That did just came out. <laughs> oh my god, my parallel person has bad grammar and he's jumping into body now. Chris, me. don't do that trick again. That's when Desmond says, like, no, I want you to take a class on English. Come with me. Come with me. <laughs> See the way the subject and the book? Uh, I have one more thing to do. Should I oh, just so flip the whatnot? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the very last third comedy song I'm going to perform for you guys. Um, and uh, this is a song that is very important to me. And uh, I would hope that in just a matter of moments, it will be very important to you. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Cracked it. Oh yeah, cranked that. You can bring the lights down too. Oh, follow along, here we go. 
monkey chicken chicken monkey chicken duck duck chicken monkey monkey chicken monkey chicken chicken monkey duck monkey duck chicken duck monkey monkey duck duck chicken monkey chicken chicken monkey chicken monkey duck chicken chicken monkey duck chicken monkey duck duck chicken chicken monkey chicken monkey chicken duck chicken duck duck chicken monkey monkey duck chicken monkey duck chicken duck monkey duck duck chicken chicken monkey chicken monkey monkey chicken monkey chicken chicken monkey chicken monkey chicken monkey duck Chicken monkey, chicken monkey, duck, chicken, chicken, duck, chicken monkey, monkey, chicken, monkey, chicken, duck. Duck, chicken monkey, chicken, chicken monkey, chicken, duck, duck, chicken, chicken, duck, chicken monkey, monkey, chicken. Duck, duck, chicken monkey, chicken, chicken monkey, chicken, chicken monkey, monkey, chicken monkey, chicken monkey, duck. Chicken, 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 monkey, monkey, chicken, monkey, duck, 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 goose. Thank you guys very much. terrible thing to waste. Oh, right, isn't it? Oh. The, you know, the thing is, though, since this is, because people, can we post that video, in, like, in, yeah. the, so that people can watch it, so they know? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. I, I just have to, I want to put a thing at the end that says my website, so that the album is tied to it. Wait, I don't so, understand, what? See, the internet is a series of links. It'll and, never work! Uh, <laughs> but yes, I would love it if you, that'd be great. I got a buddy down at my end of the table now, assholes. <laughs> we got shuffleboard teams. Yeah. Um, so Mike and I have been friends since UCLA. We met at the UCLA Comedy Club in 19... UCLA Comedy Club, it wasn't a physical club, but it was a place where a group of us would get together uh, on Wednesday nights and then help each other flesh out material. And then a couple times a year we would do dorm shows and then I'll tell people we were comics, even though we were performing five times a year. Right. Um, <clears throat> but it was an interesting group of people like one of the guys is now the co-EP on Family Guy, and yeah. another guy writes on Family Guy, yeah. and another guy writes in television. Like people actually another guy's the voice of the Hulk. Is he really? Yeah, Fred Tattashore. Oh, Fred, he's in yeah. everything, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, Fred, he's, Fred. Yeah. And he played the farmer on Barnyard. Right, so. and he was the voice of Funkhauser. He was wow. The, and, and Fred, Fred Tattashore is a guy that when they can't get, like, Samuel L. Jackson, or, you know, uh, they'll have, like, Fred come in, and just if they just need a syllable, he'll just be like, God, like he'll come yeah. in and do that. <laughs> he'll be he'll be off stage and be like, "That's repugnant." Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> he's, a, he's a he's a big adorable white guy too, like the whitest guy in the world. Like almost he's made of mayonnaise. Like almost. <laughs> so like, just want to swipe him and lick your finger. He's adorable. <laughs> Um, but we were, we've, been, we've been friends since then. Yeah. yeah that was, that was I, know. I know. That I was a long time that. ago. I know. Um, so how's, uh, how's Tyke Furman, as I call him, your Tyke son? Tyke Furman, my son. Uh, his name is Milo, but uh, he, yeah. Um, yeah, he has several names. We call him uh, Gentleman Gaga. Is one. <laughs> uh, my wife Donna came up with Snorky LaForge, which... Uh, <laughs> Do you, you have a tiny baby visor that you put on? No, not yet. You gotta make one. I'm, I'm getting that. one for you. What? <laughs> getting one? All you have to do is go to a beauty supply store. It was just like a hair clip that they right. put on his Banana face. Clip. What? Yeah. I thought it was the, the visor. The visual Jody's visor? Face. Never mind. No, he didn't. He oh, was not actually blind. <laughs> what? Yeah. No. I, I think he was, because when he took it off, he couldn't see. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Whatever. Well, he saw fine on Reading Rainbow. <laughs> I don't get the It'd be great if he wore the visor on Reading Rainbow. Yes. I just started to get like kind of Andy Kaufman crazy about it. And everybody's like, you can see, dude. What are you... Today, kids, I'm going to tell you how to see heat signatures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a theory, by the way, and you tell me if this sounds crazy, but what if... Sounds crazy. Sounds, <laughs> what if in the Star, uh, Star Trek universe, it's, there's no saying that everybody who looks the way they do that is like human but kind of different didn't do that to themselves. I, this morning I was thinking like, what if Vulcans were just guys who were like, I'm gonna put my ears pointy, and then, you know, we spread out over the galaxy, and eventually those nerds who wanted to be different or whatever become Vulcans. Well, how did they, how did they make their ears pointy? 
I don't know implants. How do Dobermans do it? <laughs> Dobermans say? have pointy ears. <laughs> well, so you're saying that a Vulcan is a cross between a Homo sapien and a Doberman? Yes, <laughs> that is exactly what I'm saying. And you Maybe. thought my thing was and impossible. Like, what's, the, what's the weird guy? The, the no, 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 no. I would be willing to say that a Romulan is a cross between a human <laughs> and a Doberman, but Vulcans are far too. You have wild. no idea how quickly I lost interest in riffing okay. about this. <laughs> <laughs> My point is there could be there could be nerds in the Star Trek world that everybody's like those guys really don't have messed up foreheads, you know that? <laughs> like they did I, that I themselves. Think they they should make cool. in the, they should do a spin-off Star Trek movie where it's like Soul Man, where a guy like makes his ears pointy so he can get like a, a Vulcan uh, scholarship. Right. <laughs> That's genius. Yeah. And then, on the heels of that, we can make a uh, Soul Enterprise where uh, Snoop Dogg yeah, is yeah, the yeah. captain of a, of ah. a pink 1701A. Oh, and then when someone turns a cell phone on, the shit goes crazy. And then you, oh. then, then, you, then, you, then you just see the Enterprise in space doing that. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quick, turn the inertial dampeners on. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> You got a crunk to teleport? I fucking love it. Oh. Transport? You don't <laughs> teleport. Tra tra transport. Jesus Christ. Sorry! Star You're the guest. Oh, hi, Mike. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is like dirty NPR. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy NPR. <laughs> Today we look at some of the douchebags that populate Cracker Barrels. <laughs> Mike is, uh, and I, I have to th Thankfully, almost all the traveling that I've done in the last five years, except until this last year, you have been there for, and mm -hmm. we've been doing shows together at colleges. Oh. I know and what you get at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> what is it? You get the chicken fried chicken with uh, macaroni and cheese. Knew it! I knew it! You owe me five carrots. bucks! <laughs> I do. <laughs> yep, with carrots. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We're like an old married couple. Yeah. <laughs> is um, that why you guys don't have sex? <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the reasons, I guess? <laughs> there are a lot of them? It's one in a myriad of... <laughs> Take your pick. Mm -hmm. traveling, is Mike, Mike, traveling with Mike Furman is amazing. I mean, like, Mike, who is undoubtedly the nicest guy you could ever hope to meet, and also yeah, the most talented. Nice. I mean, the, yeah, yeah, Mike, nice. Mike's one of these people that thinks that everyone can just pick up any instrument and play them. But he, uh, but he is... He's, he's, he's the definition of quirky. Like, whenever we go to a town... And we like we kind of check out the area of the town. He kind of looks around and he surveys it. He judges towns based on how well Spider-Man would survive there. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd imagine easily he'll no. survive easily everywhere. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. No, no, no. Mike has a theory. San Francisco, Seattle, New York, Chicago, great cities to be Spider-Man. Sure. In. Yeah. Los Angeles, a lot of running. Yep. <laughs> You, don't, you need, like, the big... The, 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 the. That's like being Aquaman in the middle of, like, you know, Texas or something like that, where they're like, Aquaman, where are you? And he's like, I'm in a cab, dude. There's no, there's no water here. I'm not going to take... I'm not going to swim in the sewer cool again. I got this melted ice, man. I got to take it wherever I go. What if Aquaman was just relegated to Schlitterbahn, which is this water park in Texas? <laughs> just, let's all just take a minute and go what there. What would that be like? Oh, I guess it would be like that. Yeah, enjoy <laughs> that slide. It's funny now that I get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment. Guess we're not all watching the travel channels. 100 best theme parks. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, I think it, like spiders... Like, he shoots the webs out of his wrist. Spiders do not shoot webbing out of their hands. No, they don't. Nor does if the it, real Spider-Man. If it were... Mm. That's a well, he, I know he yeah. makes web shooters. Mm. All right, there we go. I but if he were going to be accurate, he would have it, the little web shooter on his belt and shoot out of his ass. Because <laughs> that's the way a spider would really shoot its web. If he wanted yeah. to be sexily accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and someone would have to go up after Spider-Man in all the cities like San Francisco and Chicago yeah. and clean up the mass of shit webs. <laughs> and it would be far more entertaining of a movie if he would swing through the city like this. <laughs> <laughs> do your Iron Man thing. I love your Iron Man oh, thing. The, I love Iron Man. I, think, I, think was, I haven't seen the new one yet, but... Um, I, I, there's one thing about Iron Man that bugged me, which is he looks so awesome, and he's, I mean, you know, he's, he's kicking ass, he's wearing a giant, you know, like a, a freaking, you know, future knight. He looks but like Iron Man. Then when he flies, yeah, okay, he looks, he looks kind of like Iron Man, but, <laughs> but when he flies, that's the only thing that bums me out is he's like, yeah, nice try, you see if, you know, uh, you, you can attack me if you can catch me. 
<laughs> oh, man. Like At this point in the program, Mike Furman did a move much like how Iron Man... Go watch the movie and watch. And, 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 it really looks fun. like Darla from The Little Rascals all of a sudden. <laughs> well, it's it's the most aerodynamic rascal. Yeah, listen, <laughs> it's true, she was. How else was Darla supposed to keep Spanky and Froggy in line but shooting repulsor beams at them? <laughs> yes. That'd be great to go back and do those, wouldn't it? Another thing about Mike Furman that's a lot of fun is uh, if you walk into any store that has an electric door, he pretends like he's telekinetic. <laughs> Whether or not there are people there. It's, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. It really is. I swear, it's, it's in my like top three best feelings. Because if you time it just right, and you do that, and the door opens, you feel like a wizard. And you feel like, I swear to God, they're everywhere. You, you can feel like a Jedi ten times tonight. And What are the other two top three best feelings? <laughs> uh, chopping wood, folding laundry. Wow. Well, Mike has no sense of smell, so that takes a lot of uh, fun. Uh, he's an Oscar. Wait, so what are your three top favorite things? Is this all smelling? Yeah. <laughs> I love to smell orgasms. How was it? The, the, the album. What? Just think of your smelly orgasms like. Screen, <laughs> screen, Wait a minute! I didn't say I had smelly I'm orgasms. Just saying. I was. Oh, I had already gone to a place be, in my head. It would be a terrible life. You're like, I'm about to go. You better hold your nose. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible life to leave. I had already gone to a place in my head where I'd imagine your screen name. That is number thirty-five. Why we don't have sex. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's, my, what's my screen name? I hadn't thought of one. Oh, all, all right. right. Fartcom83? <laughs> well, thanks for I'm tuning sorry. in to the It's taken. It's taken? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it'll be Fartcom84. Uh, yeah. That just sounds dumb. <laughs> Fartcom1 through 343 is taken. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I was a lot. I got them all. Just so. change the A in fart to a four. <laughs> <laughs> still have, no one will even know it. All right, we can still be fartcom.org. Uh, <laughs> I'm really earning that uh, explicit... Yeah, yeah, we always earn it. Yeah, sure. um, but I want to talk a little bit about the album. Um, and, and, and I know you were about to finish last year, and then yes. you literally, I mean, you took on three of the most major things that you can take on in your, in your life. You were writing and producing and recording your own album. Mike plays all the instruments on his album, by the way. Um, and also, you, uh, you and Donna bought a house, which you had to remodel to mm -hmm. move in, and she was about to have a baby at the yes. same time. Yeah. So you almost got in under the wire, you almost got the album done, but, then, but, then, but then Milo, uh, Milo came around, and, uh, and so you've, you've had dad time. So what's that yep. been like? Uh, it's good. It's really cool. He's, he's, it's crazy. I mean, you watch, you know, um, we've been reading books on, you know, how the brain develops and everything, and it's just weird to watch, you know, stuff that you take for granted that... Uh, you know, like just to see, I uh, see this is where like parenting stuff sounds lame. But, you what know. would you do if I sang out of tune? When you stand up and walk out of the you When you mean like stuff you take for granted, like it's like getting to shit anywhere you want? Yeah. Well, like, there's actually, and I, I, I say that in stand up, like you don't realize the, the first couple months of your life you are a rock star because you're past hand to hand everywhere like you're in, your main mode of transportation is crowd surfing <laughs> like that's really his whole life was just this <laughs> and then he would just drink and uh, grab a boob and, uh, and, uh, and then uh, <laughs> it's great. so what is he so the album's not um, the album is almost available. The album is almost. The album is done as of yesterday. I got it back yesterday, and it is. Boom. And it's been like, uh, it is. From everything I've heard, it is fucking amazing. Like, thanks, it's, man. It's amazing. Thank I mean, you. you you literally are like the most talented people I, I, I know. Oh, um, so you're very nice. That's and, uh, and and so it's. I mean, like these songs are like fully produced. Like it's not just. It's not just like you and a guitar. It's like these are fully produced tracks. That sounds like the death of a funny song. <laughs> it's got so much going on. You're like, I don't know where to laugh at it. Uh, I guess it's funny. But no, they, they, yeah, they're, they're very. And that's actually one of the, the, like I said about the, you know, the piano one, is that half of them 
though I'm very, very happy with them, and I'm like, oh, this is great. I have no idea how to play it live. <laughs> like I, have, I feel like somebody gave me this, like, hey, dude, can you go play these at shows across the country? I'll be like, no, there's no way to do this. It's like, I need, like, I need James Brown's band, you know? Like, I, I don't know how to do this. So it's going to have to be somebody the live show. Somebody pick up show. James Jamerson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure James Brown's band is doing nothing now. <laughs> have, they, have, they, have, they, have they buried him yet? Oh. Yeah, they're just camping out in front of his uh, corpse. Out well, the problem is they bury him. Just put the flag over him again. Maybe he'll yeah, get back up. Say, Hardest working zombie in show business. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yep. Well, um, I want to I want to wrap this up by um, I, w I would love to do a hard and firm song. Let's. Uh, <laughs> Hey, Chris, we'll, be just, we'll just be right here. <laughs> I don't hear you. <laughs> Check you guys out. look like a weird Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. <laughs> <laughs> a little curtain opens and you guys sit there. Again. You gotta do the hands. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, if you keep doing that to this song, I will kiss you. Hey. They won't do it. There's, no, it's safe. Totally safe. All right, um, let's see. Let me go in here. I'm, I'm operating the computer right now. I might cut this part out of the podcast where I'm going over here. Uh, is this, this volume is up? Is there? Yeah. I could never do a play, because I'd be like, is that prop that we talked about going to be over here? <laughs> like, I, would, I would break the fourth wall so many times. Yeah. That's what we need is, how about this? We've already got reality TV. Why aren't there reality plays? Oh. It's what do you think this is? Oh. Uh, So um, this is without, without the elaborate setup. This is a song um, that Mike and I came up with because a lot of people, a lot of people complain about the law and the restrictions of the law and the government. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mike and I feel like there are a lot of things that actually are not illegal that you can still do and right. lead, lead a rich and full life. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So many things in this world you cannot do. It's like someone is always coming down on you. That's what it's like. But there's a world of freedom out there if you are creative. Right. Now in a schoolhouse rock style jam, I shall now get demonstrative. <laughs> Licking a bank is not illegal. Really? Look it up. Fucking a tree is not illegal. How? Private property. Shaving a cat is not illegal. That's just unnecessary. Whatever. Marrying your mom is not illegal. Why would I? Wrong, but I know my rights so You can take a little cape and some itty bitty tights And stretch them over your nuts And that's not illegal <laughs> Now you try it Uh, making your bed is not illegal No, 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 pay attention uh, Sometimes I go to the library And I put lots of books where they should not be And the worst they can do is to ask me to leave Cause I've done nothing, effy, gutty You gotta look at what's written down in the law And then float past that to find your hidden gems of freedom, Mike And while I'm on the topic Hiding in a bush is not illegal. Yeah, I got as much right to be there as a squirrel or a cat. Damn right you do! Yeah. Sucking on a Bible's not illegal. Oh, because of the separation of church and state. Probably. <laughs> you can live your life doing what you want. They can lock you out, but not lock you up. Grab a fork and eat a brain. But that's not illegal. That's not illegal? I'm still a free man. <laughs> Let me see if I get what you're saying. You're basically saying, no man can go, leave the law down below. But there are loopholes where the law don't flow. And the more that you know, then the more you can grow and keep 5-0 off of your front door. Well said. So it's not so much about following me John Q. Lawmakers as I can do, but rather surfing the wave of the morally questionable, but not unlawful. So? Farting on the president's not illegal. Now you get it! Waking up drunk is not illegal. Ah, uh, he's just showing off now. Following you home is not illegal. He'll totally do it too. Spitting on a baby, it's not illegal. In France, you might feel like an enemy of the state. But that's what makes this land so great. You, you can take all the napkins in a fast food restaurant, and that's not illegal. <laughs> the system, I beat him. My lawyer, don't need him. Offenses, repeat him. Miranda rights, don't read him. Shipping a sail and sailing a ship while tickling sailors. Sailing a cake, swearing in braille. Wearing a snake, growing a tail. 
pissing off your boss is not illegal. But pissing on your boss, now that's illegal. Mike Furman, everybody! Mike Furman. Well played. Actually, stay because uh, you're going to play guitar for. We need uh, our, our next act right now is uh, he's a, a legendary blues musician. Um, do we have that third mic? Oh, it's over here. It's over here. Uh, he's a legendary blues musician, and he's uh, he's here tonight. And we are thrilled that he's here for the Nerds Podcast Live, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like you to please uh, welcome to the stage Blind Joe Jeffers is here. <laughs> Testing one, check, 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 check one, check. I'm great. Oh, thank you, Chris Hardwick and the Nerd Is Podcast for having me. You Furman. Look, you look great. Thank you very much, Chris Hardwick. Uh, I'm a, as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, the web suit. Really? I like a, a what's that, Olivia? Oh, that's uh, that's that's the tech of the show. I'm not on that. Oh. I like that one a whole lot. Fair enough. I listen to that one when it's on the the, the television. Yep. So you're bl- you can't you can't see anything. Bad question. Was, was that just rubbing it in, or what was that supposed to be? <laughs> well, you're talking about all these shows you watch that I. You can enjoy. You can certainly enjoy uh, uh, the 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 G4 attack of the show and the web soup without having to see them. Lesson to be open-minded, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Be contentious. That's all right. So, uh, are you living in Are you living in Los Angeles now? No, I'm living. I'm still living down in Baton Rouge. Um, as you know, my wife, uh, who is my road manager, Junette, uh, she left me uh, for her lesbian lover uh, right around Kwanzaa, and uh, um, <laughs> subsequently, I've been out on the road uh, kind of by myself. And she's used to pretty much be my eyes when I was on the road, so. Uh, it was, I'll be honest, it was kind of a rough time getting here tonight. Sure. Uh, but we're going to do, we're going to do uh, Never Done No Wrong, right, the song? Never Done No Wrong. My classic, we're going to do Never classic. Done No Wrong? Yeah. All right. Well, can some, you know, some artists come out here and they don't want to play their hits, but you're not afraid to play your oh, hits. Oh, I'm going to, I don't think everything else is sort of a deep cut, so let's go with, uh, okay. let's go with Never, let's go with the classic, don't you think, Harwick? Yeah, I think so. Never, never Done You Wrong. All right, let's go with Never Done No Wrong. Oh, I don't ever know no one get it, get it, get it, get it. Well, oh, blind Joe ain't never done no wrong. You're fighting for the working man and you're wrong. Well, oh, blind Joe ain't never done no wrong. You're punching out a crooked cop ain't wrong. The first thing about it being kind of hard to get here was that there was a couple of boys at the Baton Rouge bus station who thought it would be funny to put a blind man on the wrong bus. (laughs) Which I found out when someone asked me for my passport in Windsor, Canada. But I did not have my passport or actually any identification with me, as at some point I had been pickpocketed on the bus. That's tragic. It wasn't the greatest day of my life. But things took a turn. And I got taken in and put up in a place in Chicago by a young prostitute named Bebe. Spelled the way the clothing is spelled. <laughs> well, oh, blind Joe ain't never done no wrong. If sticking it to fascism ain't wrong. Well, oh, blind Joe ain't never done no wrong. If helping out the colored man ain't wrong. Baby 
they took me in in Chicago. And she let me stay with her and her boyfriend, Omar. One thing, Chris, that I learned about Bebe and Omar, something they had in common. Yeah. Both dudes. Oh. <laughs> they didn't tell you that up front. Didn't tell me that up front. <laughs> I guess Bebe saw me on the bus, and she thought it was sort of a classic case of like, hey, I found a blind man on the bus. That old Jim. <laughs> Let's ransom him off. But as you know, Jeanette had left me, so any call to ransom me was left unreturned. So the next couple of weeks, Chris, they pretty much turned into that movie, Wait Until Dark. <laughs> with me in the Audrey Hepburn role and two crackheads with hard-ons chasing me around. <laughs> well, oh my God, no, we never done. Helping out the queer man ain't wrong. An old blind joy ain't never done no wrong. If helping out the Mexicans ain't wrong. <laughs> I was able to escape when Omar went out to get some more stuff. I jumped out the window. Now, luckily, it was on the first floor. That's very fortunate for you. Very fortunate, Chris. <laughs> what couldn't be much be done about was the UPS truck that hit me seconds later. I guess the UPS driver did not see the naked white man jumping out the window, running for his life, here in the ghetto. Well, they're very focused on their package delivery. They're focused on the package delivery. A couple of inner city children found me. I don't know, maybe they're nice kids, maybe they're good kids. You would not know it from what they did to me. <laughs> well, what, what happened? They made a YouTube video of it. <laughs> uh, you can see it called uh, Naked Blind White Man Gets Firecracker Up Butt. We might have actually shown that on Web Soup. Oh. Oh, thank you. I got a check for something. I didn't know what it was. Uh, it definitely would not have been from G4. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I fled the children. And I got picked up by a couple of Lutheran college kids. No joke, just Lutherans. Good people. And they were coming out to Hollywood to make it as screenwriters. And they said, hey, old blind John Jeffers. We know your song never done no wrong with it. You ride, hit your ride, old blind John Jeffers. And the drive went fine. The drive was great. Except for one point where we stopped at Joshua Tree. And they said, hey, old blind Joe Jeffers. We've been planning for a long time on this trip. We were going to take some LSD here in Joshua Tree. Now, I have never seen anything in the outside world. But I have looked into my own soul. And I've seen the rubber man. And I know how it keeps the fires in balance. He stays underground. That's why we don't see him most of the time. Well, oh my God. I've never done no wrong. Yeah, I'm making 
love to a rattlesnake ain't wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Joe. A legend. A legend. Blind, blind as ever, but delightful nonetheless. Blind Joe Jeffers. Yeah. And there goes Mike Furman, too, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, our, our final act that's coming out tonight, uh, we actually met online, and we met, we kind of met them on Twitter, and Furman and I got in a Twitter war with them, just for, just for the fuck of it, uh, and uh, we, were, we, were try, we were trying to make team them and team us, and then the, the stuff that they were coming at us and insulting us with was so goddamn funny, and I was like, we've got to be friends. And so, uh, so we became friends, and I performed with them on Wootstock a few months ago, and I, they are genius and brilliant. They tour a lot with Jonathan Colton and on their own. And so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Paul and Storm! <laughs> Keep it going for Blind Joe Jeffers. You got, will you guys be offended if we just run take a pee break during the first song? Then it's not weird that we're not standing behind you judging you like the Council on Krypton. Guilty! <laughs> well, I don't see any giant mirrors, so go ahead. <laughs> no spinning right, hula right. here, go ahead. I've had to go to the Who the fuck needs you anyway? Oh, really quick, guys, don't check your phones because loss is about over and I just got a really upsetting text. Shut up! Wow, sandbagged. <laughs> Hi, so uh, they've brought us out here to wind the show down because you guys are having way too much fun. Uh, so good, that, that worked. <laughs> From the North Virginia suburbs and near Philly do they ride. One, he has a goatee and a six string by his side. The other packs a keyboard and sarcasm finely honed. The two men ride together into the great unknown. They are not seeking justice. They've got no wrongs to right. They're just here to tell some dick jokes and head off into the night. In rental vans and airplanes, they travel across the land. With sons of nuns and pirates, they are the opening band. Technically, we're not the only band right now. But a lot of the time, it works better. When Jonathan, Jonathan. nonetheless, <laughs> Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. La 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 la. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Chicken, chicken, monkey, duck. We're Paul and Storm. another song that works better when we're the uh, opening act like we usually are, but sort of pretend if you would. We are the opening band. We are here to do five or six or seven songs. Don't go too long and get the hell off the stage. We are the opening band. We're probably not the band you came to see tonight. But it's all right, cause soon we'll go away And we're wondering just where the hell's the sound guy He disappeared just after we got up here He's probably behind the building Rolling up a patty and he'll be gone Until our last song We got a BW band I had to sell every Star Wars figure that I had my dad to go sign for the loan. We don't got a whole lot of fans. Nobody asked for our autograph and sad to say, as of today, no panties have been thrown. And we're wondering if this was worth the drive there. We spent six hours in traffic on the highway. For 50 
bucks and half price on the cheese fries and three Miller Lite on tap. Who can drink that crap? <sighs> My cousin lives in town and will be crashing at his place unless his girlfriend's home from college and she's staying for the weekend. And if she is, then we will have to go and park the van behind the IHOP by the turnpike and we'll sleep in the back seat. And we're wondering just where the headline act is. They're probably getting wasted in the green room. And they don't give a rat's ass who we are, so when they start to play up here, we're gonna drink all their beer. We are the opening band. Hope that all of you sign up on our mailing list and buy our discs and t-shirts in black and gray. We are the opening band and we only got about 25 more minutes left. That's all we get to blow your ass away. We are the opening band. We are the opening band. Hello. Hello. Uh, while we're taking polls, do we have any mothers in the audience tonight? No. <laughs> well, how about this? Do any of you have mothers? Yes, of course. That's terrific. Those of you who didn't, we're just going to assume you are clones. Uh, for the rest of you who are not um, clonic, this song is, um, is timely. It is a Mother's Day song. And, uh, well, timely in that you have an entire year to memorize it. <laughs> because it's exactly what every mother wants for Mother's Day. You singing this. Going all Shatner on it there. <laughs> Listen to this song. <laughs> Your big day is come and gone, but this one is for you. Thanks for having intercourse with Dad. Without a condom sponge or IUD, your lack of objection to sex without protection made a sperm and egg turn into me. You gave me life, love, a home, and food and clothing every day. I gave you stretch marks and extra weight that never quite went. We mean it. Thanks for having intercourse with Dad. The carnal act that brought me here to you. Doodly do. I don't know if it was married or merely missionary, but it sure was good for me. Was it for you? I'm elated that you made it. Your love you consummated. You got inseminated, then waited and inflated. Inside you, I just stated until from your womb I cascaded. Thank you, Mom, for doing my dad. We have now come to the point in the show where Unfortunately, it is our sad obligation to tell you the tragic tale of the Italian nuns. <laughs> Snickering is not usually what we would hear. No, no, a nice sympathetic awe is what we usually get. Oh, as if prompted. Magical. Uh, anyway, here is the backstory. We swear this is all true. Uh, a few years ago, there was a convent in Italy, and at this particular convent, there were only three nuns left the whole place. Completely? 
true. <laughs> what that? <laughs> International sign language for it true. It is true. <laughs> False. Moons, me travel, come Largo. LA people hear us wank off, sing song, many minutes. True. <laughs> sad oh, nuns, we, sad nuns. We've offended the Native Americans, moving on. So, sad nuns. Um, the, the, the tale gets sadder. Because the local diocese was forced to close this convent. Not many replicants with us tonight. <laughs> yes, you, <laughs> you've all got the proper amount of empathy. <laughs> but it gets yet sadder. <laughs> Quiet, you. <laughs> uh, the reason it gets even sadder than this, because the, the reason they had to close this convent. Again. <laughs> They're just ready to be sad now. <laughs> ready to be sad is the name of my Smith's, Smith's cover band. band. Yes! <laughs> Oh, and Smelly Orgasms is my old stripper name. <laughs> it didn't go very well. <laughs> then it was subsequently my clown name, and that went even worse. Well, in most circles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, it, the reason they had to close this convent... <laughs> they're back. Again, we swear to God we're not making any of this up. A fist fight broke out among the three nuns. Entirely true. We saw it first on Fark.com. Yeah. <laughs> Four nerds in the audience, really? Uh, so anyway, we read this story, and we were wondering to ourselves how these women were possibly going to earn a living, or even, uh, we would say, survive in modern Italian society. They can't. There's no way. They haven't been prepared for the modern it's workforce. It's ridiculous to even consider They have consider no skills. It. These women are just doomed. No training. Until inspiration struck we realized there was one perfect and obvious solution. Pay-per-view non-fight. So imagine for just a moment, for one song's length, that we are no longer here at the Nerdist Podcast at Largo. No. We are now in a vast boxing cathedral. And we totally are. And from somewhere in the darkness, above the ring, a single microphone descends. That part's not funny, but thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we present our title bout for In this corner, weighing in at 114 pounds, by way of the Sisters of Our Lady of the Immaculate Right Cross, with a record of 23 and 1, with 15 knockouts, 3 TKOs, 2 decisions, Three conversions and one exorcism. <laughs> the high priestess of penance, the pounding penguin, the assassin of the passion, the stinging nun. Oh, 
Show. <laughs> with a record of 66 and 6, with, with one disqualification for using a ruler. <laughs> The Vatican Vixen, the Pontus Pitbull, the original sinner, the homicidal bride of Christ. <laughs> the assaulter from the altar. <laughs> the Undertaker. <laughs> and the mother superior of kicking. From Mexico City, Sister Maria Teresa Garcia, Graciela Aguilera, Delgado, Francisco, Diego, Arroyo, Inigo, Montoya, Zapata, Paquito, El Guapo, Abuelita, De La Boom Boom, Mendoza. So it may be hard to tell sometimes um, with music comedy acts, but it's very important that the music that's under it be good, be solid, be real. Um, otherwise, the rest just falls, like something that falls and it's bad. <laughs> nice, nice metaphor, buddy. Thank you. Sort of, sort of a meta metaphor. <laughs> And um, for that reason, we just want to do a couple of very short tribute songs to acknowledge just a couple of the songwriters, music musicians, artists who have been inspiring us since probably before we could even talk. We were taking in music, and it was making us um, who we would become one day. Whether or not you're a musician, it's true. Uh, this first one there, very short, it's called If James Taylor Were On Fire. <laughs> Somebody please Won't you get me a fire extinguisher And put me on I can't stand the heat Though I've seen fire Thank you. This is if Aaron Neville. I know I could stop right there. <laughs> but it's if Aaron Neville found an awesome parking spot at the mall, but someone else snagged it. Shit just got real. <laughs> oh, how about we not go 1920s old timey on this? <laughs> you showed that piano. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, old timey.
Motherfucker. Our last short musical tribute is actually very dear to our hearts. Above all of these, I think it is. This is If They Might Be Giants. <laughs> We're the Ice Cream Man. <laughs> Would you like a bomb pop? How about a naughty body and some lick on me? Bomb pop, naughty body, lick on me. And a vanilla severed head. Severed head. We're going to do one more song, but if, uh, if the guys want to come back out, uh, we may need you to chime in in case this starts sucking, which it probably will. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Hardwick! I didn't, uh, the pee break didn't take that long, but I just didn't, I didn't know if I didn't want to like, walk back on in the middle of your set. So I did, like, he stopped me. Yeah, I did. The struggle backstage. No, Jonah! Uh, That's what happened. Really quick, though, that They Might Be Giants, it was perfect, it was spot on, but the lyrics made too much sense to be a They Might Be Giants song. <laughs> <laughs> or did they? You are God. This is going to be our last song. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> They've been <laughs> practicing. Yeah. <laughs> but we know you're going to love it, this being the Nerdist Podcast, because it is about pirates! <laughs> so we need you all, both in the audience and behind us on stage, staring at our asses. <laughs> Hold your nose! <laughs> I see what you did there. It worked. We planned it. <laughs> That's so paid off the way you planted that seed earlier. Well. Hold your nose is our hard and firm cover band. Yeah. <laughs> well played. <laughs> anyway, we need you all to take the role of our swarthy pirate crew, and when we cue you, let forth with a full-throated piratical R. Practice now. R. Hit us two times. R. R. Hit us pie times. R. 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 Catholic school. Oh no, that was him. He got it right. Yeah, Catholic school. Yeah, I also went though. Me too. That's, oh. That's weird. You were doing more of the digits, were ya? I I <laughs> practice one more time. R. Tonight's show is brought to you by the letter R. And the number R. That's right. Pirates not be good at the maths. <laughs> Tis a variable. R. <laughs> How do you calculate the area of a circle? I R. <laughs> Now you're getting it. It's basically going to be about 10 minutes of shitty puns, so strap in. Thank you. This song is called The Captain's Wife's Lament. The ship sailed into harbor after 15 months at sea. The captain hit the tavern with his crew of 53. That's you. Disciplined crew. Tonight's show is rated... Tonight's show's host is Lar Har Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. <laughs> Largo is the name of the place. It's not actually a person, <laughs> sir, down front. Eddie Largo just walked out. <laughs> <laughs> We're inside a sentient organism. <laughs> if I had a brownie, I would give it to you. That's my Paul and Storm cover band name. <laughs> Crew of 53. Arr! After drinking up their pay, they staggered through the town. But all the inns and public houses turned the sailors down. Dejected are. Wow. 
nice range of emotion. Now. <laughs> a lot of method actors tonight. <laughs> Let's put you through your pirate paces. Give us a thoughtful, pensive R. R. Give us a surprised R. R. Give us a confused R. R. Give us a Scooby-Doo R. R. Same thing with the extra dash of salsa. I, I love doing that joke for new audiences because it's like a little five second journey of discovery. Uh, give us a suave, sophisticated, sexy Billy D. Williams R. R. Yeah, you're some sexy comments. <laughs> I believe we left off, oh, so long ago at Dejected R. The captain said, fear not me, lads, you all can come with me. I live just around the corner, and you all can stay for free. Hopeful R! R! What kind of socks you been wearing? R! What is your favorite chemical element? R! Who's your favorite droid? R2-D2. -two -two. From your favorite movie? I prefer R5D4. <laughs> That's because you are a nerd. <laughs> Two one me, the medical droid. R. That was just one for Hardwick, apparently. That's fine. Not all of the show is for you people who paid. Precisely 23%. <laughs> Who's your favorite captain of the Enterprise? R. See, this can go on for quite some time. In our hands. What, is, what is your favorite crime? Arson. Who said our ape? <laughs> I thought it. Does that count? <laughs> nay means nay. Apparently not according to Roofy Beard back here. <laughs> when a wench says nay, she totally means R. <laughs> uh, Roofy Beard is my Limp Biscuit cover band. <laughs> Game on, Hardwick! Uh, oh, there's a song in here. <laughs> oh yeah, and an audience watching. Some of them anyway. Uh, we left off at Hopeful R? Yes. But... When the captain's wife awoke upon the break of day, they say that you could hear her wailing clear to Botany Bay. Yeah. <laughs> Tis still a new record. It's always a woman that ruins it. Just the name of our next album. <laughs> You know what would suck? What would, what would really suck, Storm? If this entire six minutes of shitty puns resulted only in a two-minute song that was one shitty pun repeated over and over. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really terrible. I hope, I really hope that doesn't happen. Me too. Let's find out together, shall we? Okay, we're gonna do one more R. Uh, nah, we're, we're, uh, we're gonna cue you for one more R. Sorry. <laughs> Walked into that one, we're gonna give you that. <laughs> Still, it's no excuse for going off early. <laughs> Sailing on the SS, I swear to God, this never happens, apparently. <laughs> All right, are we done? We're gonna count to three, and you're gonna go R. And I'm gonna finish this fucking song. <laughs> She said there's semen all around the bed and semen on the floor. Semen in the bathroom and behind the closet door. There's semen in the fireplace and semen in the hall. The living room is carpeted with semen wall to wall. Ah! There's semen in the entryway and semen on the stair. And worst of all, there's even semen in me underwear. There's some 
behind the larder and beneath the table too. I do believe your semen got to do me Irish too. There's semen here in front of me and semen in the rear. My God, there's even semen hanging from the chandelier. There's semen on the windowsill, semen in the yard. The semen even left a stain upon the St. Bernard. Although I am a patient, white is more than I can bear to wake up in the morning with your semen in my hair. Disgusted are from the lady. Ooh, a couple of excited hours. <laughs> I ne'er again do wish to see thee darken up my door. So clean up all your semen and come round my way no more. So clean up all your semen and come round my way no more. Clean up all your semen and come round my way no more. Douchey pirates wear Ed Hardy. All right, uh, <laughs> guys, that was amazing. Thank you so much for doing the show and coming here. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. you know what? Speaking of speaking of douchey, I have to clear something up. We actually did meet before we met on the internet, but you would not remember, nor do we expect you to. Uh, about at this point, I think it was about. Is this a drunk wish Harwick story? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> My favorite kind. <laughs> We, uh, about two and a half years ago, at Comic-Con New York, you were there with uh, Barnyard yep. doing an appearance, yep. and we were idiots that you didn't know, and trying to establish ourselves, and we thought, I know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll record some videos and put them up on YouTube, we'll just do random shit, because we're hilarious, and everything we do will be awesome. That is a groundbreaking idea. I know. <laughs> and then we, um, so we waited in line for you, because, like, we knew who you were, and we were, like resented the shit out of you because you guys were, had a Comedy Central special and we didn't. Oh, the Hard and Firm special. Right, yeah. Right, right, and right. we were like, oh, this thing sucks. We could have done that. Uh, so we thought we would... Does this get nicer? No, it doesn't. <laughs> but only for, for you. Okay, okay. We waited in well, line. At the end, a puppy is born. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> we waited in line uh, and got to the front and like you were filming and I was just, hey, we're Paul and Storm. Have you ever heard of us, Chris Hardwick? And you're like... No, sorry. And like, I just felt like such a complete douchebag afterwards. Like, that was just not even, A, it wasn't funny, B, it was cruel, and C, it was not good for any of us involved. So we never put it up on, on the internet. And well, boy, wouldn't it be great if this story had a point? No. The point is, I can finally sleep after three years. <laughs> I, I don't remember that. I, I'm glad. Why would you? There was like 900 people in line for you, and no, no, only that, some of them were no, no, assholes no, no, that, with video cameras. No, no, no. That was when we did the barnyard panel at New York Comic Con. There were, it was there were like 20 people in the uh, that came to the barnyard <laughs> panel because it was all adults, basically. And like, he can name all of them except for you guys. That's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> I formed great friendships with everyone that I met in New York. All those 18 year. other people, you are <laughs> great friends with them. Yeah, no, there were there were like 20 people at the barnyard panel, and then you know, like the Aquatine Hunger Force had like a thousand people, and we we're like, yeah, we're talking animals, um, <laughs> but, and they do drug references. Yeah, exactly. We don't we don't get to do that. But I'm sorry that I didn't. Well, now I. Yeah, shame on you for not knowing who the hell these two people you never met were. I'll tell you what. At the next New York Comic Con, try it again and see what happens. Uh. <laughs> um, but it was, so you guys live? You guys based your base in New York? Uh, East Coast, I actually live near D.C. and Paul near Philadelphia. Oh, okay. Well, so you guys... Oh, wait. I think I'm under... You guys actually don't... Oh, you, you record separately. Like, over the internet. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you have a... Where, 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 can, people, where can people find more Paul and Storms? There's Paul and, Paul and Storm .com, at Paul and Storm on Twitter. Yeah, pretty much you do the Google search for Paul and Storm, and you get the basket of things that people are supposed to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Can I bing it? <laughs> You can bing if you want to bing. Bing! All right, cool. <laughs> That's not how bing works. You don't just make an onomatopoetic sound. I don't. I'm not sure about that. Bing! You're right. Oh. Nothing happened. I just no said it. No answers are coming at my the, face. <laughs> yeah, By the way, onomatopoetic sound is my Bell and Sebastian cover. <laughs> Are, are you guys? Uh, are, are you doing? Are you doing stuff separately from Colton on the on the road, or are you? Are you doing Finally. <laughs> he cut Boy, that cut. anchor's been dragging you down for a while. Yeah. Um, we. How, how are the crowds? How, how are the crowds out in the, in the, in the middle of the country? Uh, 
they, uh, uh, I don't know. Well, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm asking because Furman and I specifically don't do comedy clubs anymore. Oh, oh as, God, as, yeah. As a musical comedy duo because, you know, our, our, I mean, a song is generally like a sketch. And if people aren't on board in the first ten seconds, the, the joke per minute ratio is not that high. Yep. Exactly. And so it gets kind of hard. Like, we always say we'd rather be the funny people in a music venue than the musical people in a comedy venue. And yep. that's really um, how we started. Like, we came from the music end. We were in an a cappella group called Da Vinci's Notebook, which was a professional <laughs> yes. And we actually worked the folk circuit. So these were, we would be with very serious acoustic acts. And I guess they felt like in order to, to uh, have something that was a little lighter, they would put us on the bill to do our little songy, dancey thing. So we, we never did a lot of comedy clubs until later. And for the same reason, like, yeah, comedy has rhythms and music has rhythms, but they don't always go together very well. Not to mention comedy clubs, their sound system. Like, if you're more than, like, one microphone, I don't know if you guys ran into this much. But oh, yeah. Like, they're never ready for, what, you need, what, three inputs? I don't even think I can count that high. <laughs> we played, we played one. D.I.? <laughs> what the hell kind of faggoty bullshit is that? <laughs> <laughs> we played one comedy club where we were literally sort of daisy-chaining both of our instruments into the same line, which was going into a, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Boy, I'm, this is some stellar radio. Uh, uh, amplifier. Uh, an amplifier, yes, that was overheating every one and a half songs, and they had a big wall fan pointing at it. And we would just have to stop every five minutes and wait for about ten minutes for the thing to, to oh, cool wow. down so we could sing another song. Sounds great. Yeah. Oh, it was so much fun. Oh, I love those days. What did you guys do during that time when it was cooling down? Just sort of sat cross-legged yeah, on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all so. put our heads down. <laughs> The, well, the, the, the comedy club, it, they're basically like PA mics that you, you get there yep. that they buy at Guitar Center. Yep. Plus, there's such a, um, there's a lot more confrontational of a, it's like almost more of a confrontational setup. Like, people go to comedy clubs like, make me laugh, motherfucker. Well, they do. They're very, you know, what's interesting is that audience, a lot of audiences don't realize that you do have a job as an audience to kind of, like, it's a relationship that you're forming with them. And you, mm -hmm. their, their part of it is they need to kind of come, they need to be willing to, to connect with you. Like, yeah. you can't force people to connect with you, and they do. They go because yeah. it's very expensive to go mm -hmm. to a comedy club. I don't even know why people do it. Uh, it's yeah. like a hundred bucks, you know, easy yeah. to, that you spend. And it's, it's easy to make that sound like we're just blaming the audience because we weren't funny or something, but, right. like, it, you're exactly right. Like, like, an audience that comes to a theater setting, like, like here at Largo, a like fine audience like this, right. they're just, they're friendlier. Well, you just, I mean, if the audience just gives 10%, that's enough that you can, that you can mm -hmm. and they don't have to, you know, I'm not saying they have to do all the work, but yeah, they just need to do a little bit of work. And you were talking about the jokes per minute ratio, which is huge because... JPMs? The yeah. JPMs, that's right. <laughs> I didn't want to confuse the folks. The JPMR. JPMR. But um, yeah, it's very true. Like with, with the stand-up, it's, you know, the, a rhythm you get into set up, punchline, set up, punchline. Mm -hmm. And with uh, comedy, you just oh. heard the songs, there's sort of more of a flow. And if you've had two comics on, um, or for an hour before, that has this audience in this rhythm, and suddenly you do the song about the opening band that has, you know, maybe a dozen jokes in it, yeah. it's hard to, to get them to come around. Well, it's difficult because you, you really, I mean, like I said, they're basically sketches, and they, they have to buy the premise, and if they don't, then it's like... I mean, Furman and I would have that. We would, we would start a song, and where the first laugh was supposed to be, it yeah. wasn't there. We yeah. were like... It's like that Krusty the Clown thing when he did SNL. This goes on for 12 more minutes. <laughs> I gotta clean my ears. <laughs> the Big Ear family. I miss Piscopo too. Did, did you guys play a lot of colleges? Yeah, yeah, we play, we play colleges. How did colleges go for you guys? Um, for the most part, well, the, one of the problems with colleges is that the shows are run by college students. And yeah. so yeah. what happens is you'll show up and they'll go, Hey, it's great you guys are here. We just started handing out flyers at six o'clock. Yeah. yeah, and you never you never know what you're up against with a college because I mean we've heard everything from oh they're uh, they're screening the lake house on the other side of campus so there's no one here tonight because everyone's at that or right. <laughs> because that was such a great hit with the well, college kids. Well, I'm telling you, but that's that, that happened. We had to compete with Carrot Top one one time at a show, Ooh. and they don't colleges really feel like comedy is just this piece of wall art that you can hang anywhere. Right. So they're like, oh, you. Uh, Go be funny over there at the top of that walkway so when students are coming out of class, you can just throw jokes at them. <laughs> right, here are some pies that you can use. Right, exactly. <laughs> Comedy, it's that thing that you can put anywhere. So they don't understand that there's a little bit of setup that needs to happen. So, 
Um, yeah, it's 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 it's, a, it's hit or miss, but you don't feel responsible with college because they have to pay you, and it doesn't matter if anyone shows up, and you go and do your best, and that's sure. that's all you can yeah. do. We love. Um, I mean, this doesn't make us unique, probably, but we love hearing people's worst gig stories. Like, can you off, to, off the top of your head, either as a stand up or as hard and firm, where where some of the, like the really horrible gig? You guys can chime in too. Uh, I mean, the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your worst gig? Because you, you haven't been delivering. <laughs> Whoa! Mostly, most of the material's been coming from up here, Chris. Holy shit! <laughs> um, worst gigs... Well, <clears throat> Mike and I played at... We played at Molly Malone's once, and we followed this... Molly Malone's is, a, is an Irish pub in Los Angeles, and we followed this band called the Snake Handlers, and the Snake Handlers are this insane... Like, they're fucking crazy awesome musicians. The snake's gone out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> snakes! On a plane! <laughs> snakes! Um, and so we... Uh, so they, they fucking tore it up and everyone went nuts and then we go up and we start singing our patriotic song about dinosaurs. Yes. And people weren't really aware that there were comedians coming up and they didn't understand and, and literally a hammered lady got up on stage in the middle of the song that we were singing about American dinosaurs and drunkenly in my ear while she was spitting she goes, why are you singing about this? <laughs> <laughs> And that lady was your conscience. <laughs> yep. I had to. Uh, I had to once. Um, I was at a bar in Santa Monica. I had to. Uh, I was hosting the show. I had to get up uh, in, to the microphone, which was in front of a, a big screen TV, which had football on it. And uh, no one was there for comedy. Ooh. Everyone there for the football game. And I had to turn off the, the TV. <laughs> <laughs> and it was weird because I had to turn around. I turned it off, and I was like, "All right." <laughs> uh, and then I like literally heard like it sounded like three guys at once. Was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. And then like uh, like I had some like I got a free meal. I was like, "Well, everything's not gonna be that bad." I got free food out of this. Sure. Um, the food started making me sick. Uh, progressively throughout the show and I was trying to bring I think uh, Paul Tompkins was on the show and I was, I was about to bring him I was like so this next guy oh <laughs> and like you know it's like uh, I tried to power through it and then I s forgot his name completely and then everyone was like uh, like thinking it was a bit and I was like please uh, duh, fuck, duh, fuck it and then I ran to the bathroom wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I was no. going to ask if you got diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it. No. Nope. <laughs> good, good, good thing you didn't say. I got diarrhea. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't. I got, I got diarrhea of the mouth. Oh. So I, I, um, yeah, and then I, I threw up all over the bathroom, which apparently everyone could hear. <laughs> <laughs> and what's um, the funniest part of your set that night? It was probably, yes, exactly. Tonight, too. It was a highlight of my career, really. <laughs> We, uh, I'm, we're probably I, I, thinking the same one. Yeah, we opened for um, Tracy Morgan. This was in a, uh, SNL days. <laughs> oh. and it wasn't because it was Tracy Morgan at all. No, oh, he was great. It uh, was because it was in a, uh, a basketball arena, this big show being promoted by the campus. It was like 6,000 people. It was Friday night. It was like $5 for students to get in. And, oh, and no, no one was aware that there was anything on the bill except yeah, for Tracy none Morgan. None of the advertising said anything except Tracy Morgan. So let me just take a guess. So when people pay money to go see a show of someone that they're going to see, they love to see people they don't know get yeah, up before Yeah, they them. especially love to see some crappy local comedian do 15 minutes first. Right. Then they're ready for him, and then they say, okay, now here's this cool a cappella group, Da Vinci's Notebook. And we were supposed to do, I think, 40 minutes Acapella was never you, cool. No. <laughs> Did you? By the way, that sounds like it's not a real thing. Like, it sounds like you'd be making a joke like, hey, remember when Da Vinci's Notebook opened for Tracy Morgan? I, <laughs> that's, that sounds like a, that sounds like a family guy setup that they threw out yeah. in the writer's room. Yeah. That's yeah, like, that's that like the time Da Vinci's Notebook <laughs> opened for... <laughs> Here's another reference to a thing that happened. <laughs> like that one time I said that one time <laughs> then there was that juxtaposition um, so but we almost got booed off stage. yeah you, you have not lived people until you have been booed at by 6,000 people it almost can't side. affect you at that point because it's so overwhelming it sort of can't well the problem was there was probably a little clatch of about a hundred to two hundred people who were actually there to see us and in and we're enjoying what we were doing but the rest of them were all like drunken frat guys who just wanted to see Tracy Morgan do dick jokes 
And we like, you know, literally partway through our first song, we're making eye contact and doing little sort of telepathic, how right, long do we know. have to sing before we can get yes, off the stage and still get paid? The fuck <laughs> out of yeah, because like we were getting paid really well, so we didn't want to just walk off. Right. And, and we were doing the math. And we had a song that we used to close with, uh, like as a special little encore that was nothing but a string of expletives done to, you know, really sort of gentle music. That was our second song that mm -hmm. night. Uh, you know, it was, hey, fuck you. Uh, 12 minutes of that. Uh -huh. uh, and then I think we just sort of, you know, surfed over the wave of hatred for the next 14 minutes and figured that was long enough that they'd still give us a check and got the hell out of there. But that was just, that's just demoralizing. It's like, uh, it's, it's like the condemned man standing on the, on the gallows getting yelled at. You know at. what it was? It was the opposite of this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Nerdist, if you will. I appreciate that. Um, so uh, people need to find you online, uh, paulandstorm.com. Yeah, uh, yeah. And also, you, as I said, you are at Paul and Storm on Twitter. And your tweets are hilarious, by the way. And you Thank both you. use Thank the same you. account, and you bracket a P or an S as to wh whomever is speaking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you should follow You should follow them uh, as well. Um, do you have anything uh, specific that you want uh, to Well, we've, uh, as, a, as a group, we have a relatively new CD out called Do You Like Star Wars? Um, <laughs> Yeah, we're just Don't waiting. answer that. We're waiting for the cease and desist on that one, but until then, it's going to go great. And we have a, a show that we've started doing with um, with um, Adam Savage and Will Wheaton, another good friend Woodstock. of ours. Woodstock. Yeah, I did it here when it was at large. When, when was That's right, you guys. Right. Yeah. Phenomenal show, and, and Will, I should have Will, Will and I were roommates in, when we were teenagers. I've known that guy forever. And Adam Savage I met because of you guys, and he was on the first Live Nerds podcast. That's right. Which so, was terrific. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. He was amazing. Thank you thank you for facilitating uh, my friendship with Adam Sure, Savage. thank you for thanking us for facilitating that friendship with Adam. <laughs> thank you for thinking to thank me for thanking you. <laughs> guys, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but one for them and one for you, and one for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, real, real quick. We'd love to get the chance to say this out in public. We've been saying it for a long time. Like, both we and every guy we know just have the hugest man crush on Furman. Oh, yeah. 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 We just want us to, like, swaddle him and put him in one of those baby slings and take him home and feed him peas. Yeah. He, he's, he's the most lovable. He really is. I don't think Mike's ever paid for a car. People are always just like... <laughs> people are always just like... I'm getting a new car. Do you want mine? I mean, like, it's fucking crazy. Like people just lay gifts at his feet because he's such a he's such a wonderful presence. Um, all right, so we we will see you see you guys online. And I also we're gonna we're gonna close with one with a group song. But I do want to say, uh, first of all, thank you so much for coming tonight. This was a super fun show. Yeah. Amazing. You can email us at podcast at nerdist.com. Uh, I would like to make the announcement, uh, this just was confirmed yesterday, the next Nerdist live show at Largo will be Thursday, June 10th with Craig Ferguson. Hi all! Uh, we will be here for that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so get your tickets for that as well. Details are on nerdist.com. Um, so let's all, let, let's invite uh, Furman and, uh, by the way, that was Tom Lennon earlier who was going to To end the night, um, it's it's a very special song, uh, an original written by uh, one of our heroes, um, and you'll probably well, it's it's a Weird Al song. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great. And and we thought this would be a, a great way to sort of uh, send you off into the night by saying that we don't want to spend one more minute with you. <laughs> One. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I heard that you're leaving, leaving, gonna leave me far behind. So far behind. Because you found a brand new lover You decided that I'm not your kind So 
I pull, I pull your name out, name out of my Rolodex And I tore all your pictures in two And I burned down the malt shop where we used to go Just because it reminds me of you that's right, that's right, you ain't gonna see me cry. I'm glad, I'm glad that you found somebody new. Cause I'd rather spend eternity eating shards of broken glass than spend one more minute with you. I guess I might seem kind of bitter. Got me feeling down in the dumps Cause I'm stranded all alone In the gas station of love And I have to use the self-service pumps Oh, so honey, let me help you with that suitcase You ain't, you ain't gonna break my heart in two I'd rather get a hundred thousand paper cuts on my face than spend... Oh my gosh, it's Weird Al Yankovic! I'd rather rip out my intestines with a fork than watch you going out with other men. I'd rather slap my fingers Again and again and again and again and again Oh, can't you see what I'm trying to say, darling? I'd rather have my blood sucked out by leeches Shove an ice pick under a toenail or two I'd rather clean all the bathrooms at Grand Central Station with my tongue Than spend one more minute with you Yes, I'd rather jump naked on a huge pile of thumbtacks or stick my nostrils together with crazy glue. I'd rather dive into a swimming pool filled with double-edged razor blades than spend one more minute with you. I'd rather rip my heart right out of my ribcage with my bare hands and then throw it on the floor and stomp on it till I die. <laughs> then spend one more minute. Now leaving Nerdist.com.